Excuse me, I should unmute the mics. Welcome back, <laughs> Irish fans. <laughs> Ryan Camden alongside Reggie Brooks live from the FIDM studio. 7-1 Notre Dame will obviously face off against 7-1 Arizona State Saturday at Sun Devil Stadium. Kickoff is slated for 136 Mountain Time. Reggie, what is that Eastern Standard? <laughs> It's actually 3.30. 3.30? So it's, it's, it's a noon game. Yeah. And, or it's, it's a regular kick. I mean, it's nothing nothing too different. Of course, these two teams faced off last year in the Irish Shamrock Series contest. Notre Dame defeated ASU 37-34 at Jerry World in Dallas, Texas. Notre Dame is actually 3-0 all-time against the Devils with wins both at Notre Dame Stadium and Sun Devil Stadium. And then you see former Notre Dame coach, Dan Devine actually coached at Arizona State, 55 through 50. Did you know that? No, I did not. That's a, that's a new one on me. <laughs> of course, we, we mentioned it before the press conference, players to watch. Reggie, defensively, the linebacking core will be highlighted all game, really, by pundits and, and analysts. How important will Jalen Smith be in this contest, calling plays, and really his relationship with Niles Morgan? It's going to be critical, and it starts, you know, today. You know, as Coach Kelly was talking about, you know, they'll get 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 in there, get to practice. They'll have a system that they'll work through, and I, again, I think it's going to be multiple guys being responsible for you know communicating. But Jalen Smith will be that main, in my mind, that main conduit between the front seven and and the back back four. Um, in terms of identifying coverages they need to be, blitzes, and making sure guys get lined up in, in the appropriate locations. And then just helping Niles read, you know, read properly. You know, and his athleticism is definitely going to help him. But it really comes back to the confidence level of Niles Morgan to understand, okay, what his responsibilities are. So Jalen Smith will be a key factor in helping him over those, some of those bumps that you're going to have. I mean, you know, the big thing that really get, concerns me is can we keep up with the tempo, and that's going to be important for you know Jalen to communicate to Niles. Hey, we got to we got to stay on, we got to stay after it, and keep him built up throughout the course of the game. You know, we keep talking that this is a huge opportunity for Morgan, which it is. Uh, Joe Schmidt will be back next year, but this is also a huge opportunity for Jalen to say, hey, I can captain this defense, right? Well, he he, he and that's the thing. Yeah, it's it's a you know kind of a give and take. Right. You know, he had a comfort level. He's just a sophomore, and this is the thing we, we tend to, you know, we you know forget. We forget. You know, we saw him last year and how, how aggressive and how good he was as a player. I mean, this kid's ceiling is still going up, but he's just a sophomore. And you, you had a veteran guy, a senior guy, and, and, and Joe Schmidt that took the pressure off of Jalen because at one point in time that moved him inside. Now he's in his natural position of where he can make plays. Jalen Smith is a guy that needs to have that freedom to run around and, and be aggressive and, and, and take chances. Once or twice a game, I'm constantly just blown away by, by Jalen's closing speed. It's, it's, it's magnificent. But offensively, let's keep an eye on one of my favorite players on this team, tight end Ben Koyak, the senior from Oil City, Pennsylvania, has two touchdowns on the year and is really starting to become a first-tier option for Golson. What kind of impact could he have on this game? You heard Coach Kelly talk about how he's played the most snaps of anyone on this team. Well, if we're not forced to have him in in the in, in, you know, in max protect, he is a, a, a vital component in ability to, to get one on one matchups with a linebacker or a safety, you know, and use his size and physicality in the middle of the defense to really give them fits. And I also see him being that um, kind of that uh, uh, escape valve or that release valve for Golson when they bring pressure to be able to get him the ball uh, quickly and allow him to get you know get the ball quickly in his hands and be one on one with one of those smaller uh, either cornerbacks or uh, defensive backs and make plays. The kid can make. He's he's a physical guy and that's what that physical presence because when they bring two two extra defenders in the rush and they go from bringing five to six guys. He is going to be a key factor in, in the middle of that defense or wherever they're bringing that pressure from. You have to think he's going to have one or two plays where he just busts the middle of the field wide open. Moving on, Reggie, let's take a key. Let's take a look at your keys to the game. First key, dominate possession. Long, sustained drive. Maybe they scored quickly against Navy a few times, but you don't want to let this Arizona State team hang around. And what I'm kind of getting at, Torian Folsom may be eating, grinding out some time. Well, I, I take you back to the Navy game, um, second half. We get the we get a stop on fourth down, and we don't move the ball. That cannot happen. 
We've got to get that ball in the end zone. We've got to control the line of scrimmage at the point of attack and allow Torrin Foston to make those big explosive runs, but also control that clock and control and the ability to keep Arizona State's offense off the field, and you have a kid that's really coming into his own. So that dominating that possession of not just you know running the football, but being effective, and, and it's not always just running. You know, he's a great runner, but he's a heck of a receiver out of the backfield. And when they're blitzing, you know, three and four guys, we talked about Ben Koyak, but it's also, you know, getting that first down with the dump-off pass. And we saw a lot more of that with Ghost and of dumping it off to his, uh, uh, his uh, safety valve, either, you know, Ben Koyak or, um, um, in this case, it'll, it'll be Torin Foston and his ability to make plays out of the backfield. So, you know, dominating possession by maintaining and getting, maintaining the ball and getting first down. Olsen, 120 rushing yards in back-to-back -back games. The first Notre Dame football player to do that since 2006. I believe that was Jarius Jackson. Key number two, disrupt Taylor Kelly's rhythm. A lot of questions with Kelly. Is he healthy? Is he 100%? But when he is, he can beat you with his legs. Very athletic. I believe he had 100, or 55 rushing yards down the stretch to beat Utah. And of course, he has a great rapport with Jalen Strong. Well, and that's where that linebacker comes in of you know, the, those blitzes and getting and hitting your hitting your spots. When we're when we're blitzing, when we're coming out the quarterback, we've got to get be on point. You saw that with Joe Smith several times, Jalen Smith, um, that the ability to get to the quarterback. And we saw at the end of the game, you know, Matthias Farley getting to the quarterback. When you when you dial up a blitz, we've got to hit our marks, and that's where you that disrupt that rhythm. Or for Taylor Kelly, is don't let him stand back in the pocket or escape the pocket and get wide and, and break down the integrity of your defense. Of course, last year Notre Dame had six sacks against Kelly in Arizona State. Maybe keep an eye on Romeo Aquara. He leads this team with three and a half. And of course, the third and final key, 30. Is it the magic number? The Irish are 12 and three when scoring 30 to 39 points, 10 and 0 when scoring 40 or more under Brian Kelly. Can they put up that type of numbers uh, against the Sun Devils? It's very, we're very, very capable. I mean, you look at this offense when we're clicking, we're putting points on the board, you know, 49 against Navy, um, you know, we, we hit 50. So we have the capability of bringing up points. And Arizona State's defense, because when they come to blitz and get pressure, if you pick it up, we have guys that can make big plays. So, you know, when we get in the red zone, when we get those opportunities similar to, to Navy, when you have the chance to put points on the board, instead of putting three, we need to be putting six and seven points on the board uh, every opportunity we get. And we'll get a lot more opportunities against this uh, high-paced uh, Arizona State uh, def uh, defense. Taking advantage of the name of the game, of course, the Irish coming into the contest with Arizona State averaging 35.4 points per game. That'll do it for us today. Remember, a ton of great Notre Dame football content right now on the website. Watch and do, including what is an almost heartbreaking trick shot. Monday tribute uh, to Joe Schmidt. You definitely want to want to take on that and maybe pull out the tissues. Of course, a lot of great stuff on uh, watching D this week on the live sector. Brian Kelly Radio Show is back Thursday, followed by 2006 UCLA for the Thursday Night Classic broadcast. Uh, Quinn Samarja, you remember that, that game, was a heck Reggie? Of a play. That was a heck of a. And you know, you talk about two guys <laughs> that had a rapport. Yeah, those two guys really you know could dial it up, and you know uh, Jeff could go get the football. Current strength and conditioning assistant David Grimes. He might have a few stories about that game as well. And of course, huge ACC broadcasts this week as well as volleyball takes on Louisville and men soccer. ACC tourney, ESPN3, huge ACC class. ACC champions, men yeah. soccer. First time ever. But yet, they've yet to beat Virginia. So it, it's going to be a huge matchup. For Reggie Brooks, I'm Ryan Camden. Go Irish, beat Sun Devils.